Hello Minecrafters, this is Builderboy2005 again talking about some compact memory that you can make for your computers. This is a part of a series that I'm going to be doing about different parts of a computer and after I finish videos about all of the parts I will build the computer and make a video about that as well. So you'll be able to watch as I go through the steps of building the different parts of a computer. Uh, if you've been keeping up, I've uh, recently released a video about compact ROM and RAM and you guys should go check it out it's very nice um, it's got very compact uh, versions of ROM and RAM but unfortunately they're not very fast so that's what this uh, machine right here is for is for compact yeah high speed ROM for uh, storing your programs or whatever you need your ROM for it takes uh, eight inputs right up here, the yellow and the light blue, four of each, and it outputs uh, four green. Right now I just have this RAM set up to nibbles, so each entry only holds a nibble, but it can be easily expanded to hold a byte. Uh, the reason I'm making it store only a nibble is because my computer is nibble based. So uh, yeah, I'm only making it store a nibble right now. So in order to understand what these inputs uh, mean, we first have to go over here and look at the memory. So this red and white is the memory banks. There's one on each side. And uh, the reason I have one on each side is to maximize speed. Uh, but this right here, all the way in front of me, everything behind the black line is a single memory bank. Each side holds eight uh, eight selections so altogether a memory bank holds 16 selections now 16 selections if you wanted to select a certain one of those you would need a 4-bit selection um, input now because uh, 2 to the 4th is 16 so using 4 input uh, bits you'd be able to select a single entry from this memory bank and that is what the blue wool is for. The blue wool inputs into both of these multiplexers, or I should say decoders, on either side. A uh, decoder of my own creation. And it outputs a signal to, or actually it, uh, it outputs a signal which turns off a torch and lets one of these um, one of these memory areas turn on. As the uh, the redstone turns off, which in turn turns on the torches. So once one of these memory banks is uh, is uh, enabled, it sends its signal down and onto the green output and off into your CPU or wherever you're having it go. And so that's what the uh, the blue wool does. It selects a certain entry from the current memory bank. And that brings us to the yellow wool. The yellow wool selects what memory bank is active. So right now I have the yellow wool, it's at 0000. zero, zero, zero. It will select the zeroth memory bank, which is the first one right here. If I were to flip the bit right here, it would turn into 0001 and it would select the first memory bank right here. In combination with these two uh, inputs, the yellow and the blue, we would have a total of 256 memory entries. So that would be 256 nibbles, which is 128 bytes. Now I am using a version of a quick multiplexer that was uh, present on the forums. I can't remember the name right now, but I'll post it up in an annotation so you guys can see it and check it out. It's by uh, a guy who continually makes high-speed uh, functioning things, and he's really inspiring. So I just used his um, his multiplexer as a decoder and uh, slapped it on to my uh, memory bank selector. So. This is very compact ROM. Uh, this blue part here only needs to be built once. After that, you can just keep repeating the uh, the memory banks. Each memory bank is 
8 wide because uh, each memory bank is only a width of 4 bits and each bit takes up 2 uh, blocks. So um, after you build the multiplexers on the end, the um, it just is a matter of building your ROM. And it's quite space efficient. It's, uh, it's very wide. And what that means is that you're not going to have very thin but long stretches of memory, which helps with speed a lot. Because if I had just uh, one strip of ROM running off into the distance that was only 8 blocks wide, it'd be more than 4 times as slow as this one is. So, to demonstrate the speed, I have set up each memory address with its, uh, its own address. So, you know, memory address 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 holds 1, 1, 1, 1. It's uh, inverted. And if I flip the switch right here, we can see that this bit has turned off because now I'm accessing the first bit and I have the or the first memory entry and I have the first memory entry set to 1110. I have all of the memory entries set by hand because it's ROM. And I can flip any one of these switches and access any area of the uh, the ROM. And what's nice about this is the change happens within 8 ticks. 8 ticks is the maximum amount of time it will take to access the first uh, 32 memory slots. The first 32 memory slots, that's a significant amount and all of them take the exact same amount of time to access. Maximum of 8 ticks, and it reaches minimums of around 6 ticks, which is significant. So for the first 32 memory slots, it takes a maximum of 8 ticks, and every uh, multiple of 32, it takes 2 extra ticks. So with 64 memory slots, it would take about 10 ticks maximum. changing uh, the memory the memory banks is actually significantly faster it happens within I believe three or four ticks so if you happen to find a need for changing only memory banks you can rely on it being a significant amount faster so as we know the yellow controls the uh, memory banks and the top controls each individual memory bank so the first memory bank it has the uh, I've stored the inverse of the address in each ROM entry. So if I turn off this, the torch turns on down there. That's in the first memory bank. If I go to the second memory bank, everything has been inverted. So that's an additional 16 memory entries that are entered and can be accessed with high speed. And I will be posting the world to this, so you can come and check it out. Uh, this is my test world, so there's going to be a whole lot of other stuff that's going to be uh, in this world. You can go check it out if you want, but it will start you right here so you can check out the memory and learn from it and even use it in your computers if you'd like. Just remember to give me credit, and I don't mind in the slightest. Alright, so that is pretty much wrapping up my demonstration of this RAM, or not RAM, ROM. Um, that's pretty much it. I'm glad you guys watched. Uh, sorry for the frame rate issues. I have a laptop and uh, Minecraft doesn't like laptops, unfortunately. So that and Fraps gets me a pretty low frame rate, but I hope that it didn't detract from the uh, viewing experience. And I hope that this uh, demonstration of high-speed ROM was beneficial to you and your computing needs. Uh, keep in touch. I'm going to keep posting more videos about different aspects of computers. My next video is going to be about a compact program counter that is able to easily increment and load values into a counter. Alright, thank you for watching.